So here we are at Warlord Games, which is overshadowed by its far more popular, hotter cousin, Warhammer World. Um, but I've always had a soft spot for historical, so I've always wanted to check out uh, Warlord Games HQ, and they're both in Nottingham, so I thought it'd be good to just see what's up. The Warlord Games HQ is located in Nottingham, in what is known as the Lead Belt, which is an area in the English East Midlands. I got that from Wikipedia, because of the concentration of wargaming businesses in the industrial area. The Lead Belt contains such major manufacturers as Warhammer World, the Warlord Games HQ, Mantic Games HQ, Wargames Foundry, and Wargames Illustrated. I've drifted more to historical wargaming as I've gotten older, and broken out of the Games Workshop bubble. Let's be real, Games Workshop dominates the miniature wargaming market. If you don't know miniature wargaming, and you think of models, you're probably thinking of Warhammer. Even if you play tabletop wargames, it's entirely possible that you might have never heard of any other companies. In fact, you could probably live in the Games Workshop bubble forever. But as an adult, I have to break free into different and cheaper rule sets. Don't cry for me, I'm already gone. Warlord Games makes historical, fantasy, and science fiction miniatures and rule sets. You might have heard of Bolt Action, which is pretty popular for the World War II tabletop game scene. Uh, some people promote Hail Caesar and Pike and Shot as solid rule sets. Anyway, I was in Nottingham for Warhammer World, so I figured I might as well see Warlord Games HQ as well. Because it's around the area, but also because it's the source. You have to see the source. And in this case, Warlord Games has the factory right here. This is it. We're going to the source. I've never personally seen a miniatures factory, and we're going to the whole farm to table process from the cradle to the table. For the record, I love historical armies that have a creative spin, like these Romans. Imaginary universes give you a far broader canvas, but historical wargaming is more restrictive for army appearances. When I do see an unusual or unconventional historical army, it's always a joy. Did he go in the just he kept rolling for the test. I just kept missing, I rolled really poorly. We were quite big that uh, yeah, he kept rolling sixes, which is what he needed. Because yeah, my guys have very high arms. Yeah, he told me it sounded Now, I don't know what you're expecting, but Warlord Games HQ is just a store. It's definitely not Warhammer World. Warhammer World is a theme park, an exhibition gallery, and a bar all rolled into one. And Warlord Games is just tables and products. So admittingly, Warhammer World is more of an experience, but they're the monopolistic overlords here. That's expected. I like supporting small businesses, and what Warlord Games lacks in sheer wow factor, they make up for by being a warm gaming environment. Connor was the staff member I met on my visit, and he's a great person to talk to about miniature projects and the history of Nottingham Wargaming. Um, and I don't, I don't live in Nottingham, but he knew his stuff. And that's what I look for in retail shopping. Comprehensive knowledge of wargaming history. And he passed with flying colours, which is good. And then he showed me the factory, so points for that. Oh, cool. Just from here. Yeah. I think it'd be nice to show people how big our operation is. Wow, this is huge. Yeah. So that's all these miniatures that you yeah, just have. So it's like up to that point yep. is minis. And, and then beyond that is just stock, books, uh, mini dice, dice yeah. boxes, you know, you name it. It's yeah. Wow. So it's huge. Yeah, no, wow, I didn't know. And then just around that corner yeah. is that some of our operation, uh, some of our casting rooms. Okay, that's where you... So that's where everything gets packed. Yep. Uh, so you see some Judge Dread on the thing there. Yep. So that's getting packed. And here, packing. Packing. 
oh. high is the resin room. Okay. So that's where you know your semi resin tanks yeah. and that sort of thing are being made. Then here you've got Warlord resin, which is the newer uh, plastic resin. Yeah. And then old school metal just beyond that. Uh, the, is the plastic molding here as well? No, I'm afraid not. Oh, okay. We that's somewhere sculpt else. most of it and then get it done outside. Oh, okay. Good. So that's where. Uh, this is where the, the livestock ends, and then the sort of like the waiting to be assembled stock kind of begins. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah. Wow. Paints, third party, all that yeah, stuff. You guys aren't small at all. No, this is the... we're, we're yeah, not small yeah. by. We're small by, of course, the Games big... Workshop margins, but that's yeah. everything else is. Yeah, no, you. Our warehouse yeah. is chock a block. <laughs> Thank you for the tour. No worries. Always. You know, yeah. It's too much. Just quick. Kind yeah. Of. No, it's just super cool to see, uh, because, we, you know, we, in Australia, we have nothing like this, nothing no. close, yeah. No. So there you go, that was Warlord Games, and uh, even though they're less popular than Warhammer World, uh, we'll never have the presence of Warhammer World, um, it's not as cool or hot as Warhammer World, I'm still glad we got to see it, because honestly, I, I prefer historicals at my age, and uh, it's still very cool to take a look inside, you know?